Okay, hello, this is Sam Pollock. I'm showing off my assignment two for mobile dev. This time it's a platformer in Android. So we'll get it running here. So here we have it in the Android simulator. Let me check out how to play. And you can see, there it is, and back to the menu. We can launch into the game. So you're a skeleton with no legs, you point your gun and fire to push yourself around. You can use the reload button to fill up your gun and continue your adventure. I'm going to switch it over to running in the Unity Editor now so we can get through it a little faster because it's a bit of a two-hand game. So we start here in the grave. There's your bones and your legs and you can see some treasure over there. So you can head into the castle to go get it. We go. As we get in there, I'll also describe the implementation of the platforms and the enemies. So here's our first enemy. We've got a zombie who will do a walking back and forth, and will keep himself from walking into the walls. And if he hits me, he'll take a life away and return me to the starting point. But I can also get back. Now this first platform game we have here is a conveyor belt platform push me along the direction you see, so we can use that to skip by the skeleton, or the zombie. Then we got targets to shoot, we'll earn some points, coins to collect, or diamonds to collect. Up here we've got two ghost enemies, they toggle between tangible and intangible, and can or cannot be hit. So let's see if I sneak past this one. Get by the intangible. Ride another moving platform, get some more coins. On to our next challenge. So here we see bouncing platforms. I play a sound effect when I bounce on them. They send me flying. So I can use these to climb this tower here to destroy more targets and to get a peek at a Bob Ross painting hidden up there. So next up, let's escape the spire. Dungeon. Get some more coins. Got another bouncing platform there to catch you. And then we made our third platform type. We've got slippery platforms. So watch out. Try to make you slide into the spikes. That's not all. We've also got a push platform that'll send you flying into them. But if we can make our way past, hit the bouncing platform, and head in to collect the king's treasure. Once we do, we'll get a painting on the way by, and we'll head into the basement, onto the windscreen. Here we show your time, your shots, and reloads, which you can use to track your high scores. So now that we've seen it in action, I'll take you for a quick tour of some of the most critical bits of the code. So starting here in the player, this is where I do things like, like I have these... Uh, the serialized variables that the player or that the, the designer or developer can use to set up the way that the movement works and the gun works and what which, which gun they're using. Um, if we were to add other ones with different recoil and such. Um, next up, um, I can do this aim gun and aim gun mouse. Um, the game engine determines what what whether we're running on computer or on Android and then shows the the appropriate UI. Um, next up, we've got fire gun. Should know we're using some ATAN stuff here to figure out the angles that the gun is supposed to be pointed in. Next up, firing gun instantiates the bullet and pushes the player again using some quick math to figure out what angle to send them with the force. Then reload pressed and filled ammo um, uses invoke to, 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 ca to cause a delay between starting the reload and finishing. It prevents the player from shooting while they're reloading or while they're out of ammunition. Manage the max speed, um, handle the facing direction of the player sprite based on where they're aiming, and handle some quick collision stuff. The other things I wanted to show was in the enemies, we've got the ghost using these invoked functions to toggle between tangible and intangible, um, and the boost to, to determine its movement and to keep it into a range. And finally, the zombie using this look ahead, look below functions to figure out if you're going to walk into a wall or off a cliff, and then moving them around accordingly. Um, 
And then finally, the target spawner, which is what is responsible for the random position of the targets. Um, it's got uh, it's got children with possible target position positions, and then based on how many targets we want to spawn, which is set here in the inspector, um, it'll spawn targets in those, and it'll make sure that there aren't duplicates or overlapping ones by um, by removing the used spots from this list. Okay, so it was a whirlwind tour, but you can take a look at the project on OB or on uh, GitHub if you want to take a deeper look. All right, thanks a lot.